Access is a social justice news agency. We release progressive commentary to the mainstream media. And we're hosting this roundtable discussion this afternoon to get a better understanding um, of the media's perspective on the South African economy. Um, we want to know if the media believes that the South African economy is on the right growth path. We are um, quite interested in gaining an understanding of the media's views on how we can make the economy more inclusive. We're curious about how the media reports on the economy. And um, we wonder if the media actually has a vision for South Africa's economic development. Now, we're engaging with the media on this important topic this afternoon because the media actually occupies an incredibly important position in society. The media holds the key to shaping and informing public opinion. What it reports on, how it reports, what it chooses to focus on, what it omits in its reporting are all crucial elements of shaping and informing public opinion. And in all this, I have to say that the notion of media neutrality is a myth. The media most certainly channels a perspective in the way that it chooses to cover whatever issues that it writes about. Now, I'm not raising this as a negative. Those of us who work with information, who package information, who have to interpret information for other people, know that it's almost virtually impossible to maintain neutrality when you're doing that. And I have to say from our side, as Saxis, when we're openly partisan in our coverage, we definitely say that we're on the side of the poor and we're on the side of social justice. Now, the question, though, that I hope we'll get some answers to this afternoon is whose side is the media on? And whose side is the media on when it reports on the economy? Is the media on the side of pro-poor economic development? And when I'm talking about pro-poor, um, I'd like to know if the media understands it as meaning privileging the, the, the needs of the poor above everybody else. Now, I'm not necessarily convinced that this is the case. Because when it comes to reporting and analyzing on the economy, most of the mainstream media, with some exceptions, have polarized the debate. And what they've done is polarized the debate on the economy as a debate between the left and the right. It was disappointing for me, but hardly surprising, to see a leading Sunday newspaper this past week run an opinion piece that couched the debate between growth and redistribution as diametrically opposed. You know, this is a false dichotomy. And it's a tragic one in a country where we have such huge inequality, which is still reflective of the, the apartheid status quo. Approximately 71% of African female-headed households earn less than 800 rand a month. And 59% of these earn no income at all. Now, juxtapose this against the fact that the average white woman earns 9,600 rand a month. Of course, we know that this very stark situation was created by apartheid. But are we seriously to believe that the free market system, which is premised on the principle of the survival of the fittest, is going to address this inequality? We have seen how the banks of Wall Street have emerged bigger and stronger, even after plunging the whole world into the worst recession we've seen since the 1930s. This, while 30 million jobs for ordinary people around the world have been lost since the crisis. Surely, there's enough evidence around us that we should be moving away from economic orthodoxy, that we should at least start having a dialogue about a new kind of economics, because there's often very little deep discussion of the merits of new proposals and, you know, there's very little discussion that takes place in a manner that also educates a largely economically illiterate public. 